welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, really appreciate you stopping by on today's video. We're talking about heavy lift aircraft once again. We recently did the Hercules, the Globemaster, and now we are talking about the C5 Galaxy. What a behemoth of a heavy lift aircraft. Now I've seen one of these things up close and personal, they are an incredible piece of aviation equipment. Uh, just purely seeing them take off and looking at the physics of actually getting something like that off the ground. It's uh, its mind-boggling. So we're going to talk a little bit about the aircraft today and what it's capable of and a little bit about its history. So, the C-5 Galaxy is the United States Air Force's largest and most powerful strategic airlifter. It can carry more cargo and basically twice as much as any other airlifter in the fleet. It was originally built by Lockheed but is now maintained and upgraded by its successor, Lockheed Martin. The Galaxy has many similarities to its smaller Lockheed C-141 Starlifter predecessor and the later Boeing C-17 Globemaster III. Back in 1961, several aircraft companies began studying heavy jet transport designs that would replace the Douglas C-133 Cargo Master and complement the Lockheed C-141 Starlifters. The Army wanted a transport aircraft with a larger cargo bay than the C-141, whose interior was too small to carry a variety of the outsized equipment that they needed. These studies led to the CX-4 design concept, but in 1962 it was rejected because it was not viewed as significant advantages over the C-141. By late 1963 the next conceptual design was named the CX-X. It was equipped with four engines instead of six engines in the earlier CX-4 concept. The CX-X had a gross weight of 550,000 pounds, a maximum payload of 180,000 pounds, and a speed of Mach 0.075, or 500 miles per hour. The cargo compartment was 17.2 feet by 13.5 feet high and 100 feet long with front and rear access doors. To meet the power and range specifications with only four engines required, this was a requirement of a new engine completely and dramatically improved the fuel efficiency with the new designs. The criteria was finalised and an official request was proposed that was issued in 1964. This was classed as the Heavy Logistics System. After a down select, Boeing, Douglas and Lockheed were given one year to study contracts for the airframe, along with General Electric and Pratt & Whitney for the engines. The first Galaxy started flying testing in 1968. These tests revealed that the aircraft exhibited a higher drag divergence and Mach number than predicted by the wind tunnel data. The weight was a serious issue as well as the wing load. They tried to fix these issues over and over again for the next couple of years, but cost overruns and technical problems became a subject of congressional investigation in 1968 and 1969. It was the first program in the United States history with a $1 billion overrun. Design similarities included a nose door, but the Boeing and Douglas designs used a pod on the top of the fuselage containing the cockpit while the Lockheed design extended the cockpit profile down the full length of the fuselage. All the designs had swept wing design, and as well as the front and rear cargo doors, to allow for the drive-through capability. Lockheed's design featured a T-tail, while other designs by Boeing and Douglas had conventional tails. The Air Force considered Boeing's design over Lockheed's, but Lockheed's proposal won due to being the lowest total cost bid. What a surprise. General Electric's TF-39 engine was selected in August 1965 to power the new transport plane. At the time, GE's engine concept was revolutionary, as all engines beforehand had a bypass ratio of less than 2 to 1, while the TF-39 promised a high achieved ratio of 8 to 1. While these benefits increased the engine thrust and lower fuel consumption, the engines were extraordinarily heavy for a 4 engine configuration on the wings. On October 24, 1974, the Space and Missile Systems Organization successfully conducted a air mobile feasibility test where a C-5A Galaxy aircraft dropped a 86,000 pound Minuteman ICBM from 20,000 feet over the Pacific Ocean. The missile descended to 8,000 feet before its rocket engine fired. The 10 second engine burn carried the missile to 20,000 feet again before it dropped into the ocean. The test proved the feasibility of launching intercontinental ballistic missiles from the air. Production and testing of the aircraft started over the Transitional Training Unit at Altus Air Force Base, Oklahoma. After more issues and multiple adjustments over the course of the decade, the C-5B was built in the early 1980s, and then consistently worked on for the next several years. Throughout the 90s, more upgrades came about, including navigational equipment and a new autopilot system. 
Another part of the C5 modernization effort is the Reliability Enhancement and Reengineering Program, or RERP. The RERP began in 2006. It included the new General Electric F138 G100, or the CF680 C2 engines, with new pylons and auxiliary power units, including upgrades to the aircraft skin and frame, landing gear, cockpit, and pressurization systems. Each CF6 engine produces 22% more thrust, providing a 30% shorter takeoff and 38% higher climb rate to the initial altitude designed aircraft. This increased the cargo load and also provided longer range for the aircraft. Essentially, upgraded C5s are designated the C5M Super Galaxy. Since its creation, the C5 has been a critical instrument of national American policy. From the defense of Israel in the Yom Kippur War and the Airbridge supporting coalition forces in Desert Storm, the C-5 delivers huge amounts of unmatched capability to carry enormous loads over global distances. In terms of distinctive features, the C-5 is a very large high-wing cargo aircraft with a distinctive high T-fin tail stabilizer. With four of the engines mounted on the pylons beneath the wings, they are swept back at around 25 degrees. It has 12 internal wing tanks and is equipped for aerial refueling. There is an upper deck for flight operations and for seating 75 passengers who face to the rear of the aircraft during flight. Openable bay doors at both nose and tail end provide dry through loading and unloading cargo which increases capacity and also capability of getting cargo off the aircraft quickly. A really interesting factoid about this aircraft is that the cargo hold of the C5 is one foot longer than the entire length distance of the first powered flight by the Wright brothers at Kitty Hawk. For its ferocious consumption of fuel and its maintenance and reliability issues, the Galaxy's air crews have actually nicknamed it FRED, or Effing Ridiculous Economic Environmental Disaster. Takeoff and landing distances requirements for the plane at maximum load gross weight are 8,300 feet and 4,900 feet respectively. Its high flotation main landing gear provides 28 wheels to distribute gross weight on paved or earth surfaces. The rear main landing gear can be made easier to caster to make a small turning radius and rotates 90 degrees after takeoff before being retracted. The kneeling landing gear permits the lower the aircraft when parked, thereby presenting the cargo deck at truck bed height to facilitate loading and unloading operations. The first C5 Alpha was delivered in 1969 and in 1970 its first mission was in the Southeast Asia area during the Vietnam War. It transported equipment and troops and was later used in evacuation efforts, with one actually crashing in a devastating accident. They were also used in the Yom Kippur War of 1973 in Operation Nickel Grass, as well as providing support for the Allies in the British-led peacekeeping initiative in Zimbabwe in 1979. The C5 also features a malfunction detection analysis and recording system to identify errors throughout the aircraft, and as you can see with a gigantic aircraft like this there can be a number of errors and malfunctions that could occur, and for something as so heavy as this to find the laws of physics, you want to make sure that every error is being found. It can accommodate some impressive cargo in standardized forms too, up to 36 463 litre master pallets or a mix of palletized cargo and vehicles can be installed. One of the key attributes to getting cargo on and off the aircraft quickly is the full length and width cargo bay doors both front and rear, allowing anything within the cargo bay to actually enter the aircraft quite quickly. The full width ramps enable loading of double rows of vehicles from either end and it's capable of moving nearly every type of military combat vehicle in the US arsenal. During the development of the secretive stealth fighter, the Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk, galaxies were often used to carry partly disassembled aircraft, leaving no exterior signs to their cargo. It remains the largest aircraft to operate also in the Antarctic and was a major supply asset in an international coalition with operations in 1990 to 1991 against Iraq in the Gulf War. One of the things that speak out to me about the C-5 Galaxy is its capability to provide both humanitarian supplies and relief aid to areas afflicted with natural disasters or crises. Let's be very clear here, the amount of support and logistics aircraft that can actually provide as much as the C-5 is really not... <laughs> Not that much, you know, the Antonov is definitely up there, uh, but the fact that this thing can deliver so much so quickly worldwide is a game changer for actually supplying and, and helping those who have the need for resources that they can't normally get due to, you know, airports or aircraft or their infrastructure not working. So it's a pretty cool thing to know that these aircraft are doing more than just being involved in warfighting. 
Now the wings are one of the biggest controversial factors of this aircraft. They were replaced during the 1980s for most models to restore the full design capability. Their reliability has been a continued issue throughout its lifetime even till today. However, the upgrade program that seeked in part to address the issue has been fairly successful. The strategic airlift capacity has been a key logistical component of the US military operations also in Afghanistan and modern day Iran and Syria. Following an incident during Operation Iraqi Freedom, one C-5 was actually damaged by a projectile. The aircraft was given an installation of defensive systems including flares, chaff and other laser warning sensors. The priority for this was pretty high in the need of Afghanistan, especially when taking off in such a slow configuration of a large aircraft, leaving small air bases that could potentially be engaged from rocket fire from the hills. In response to plans to retire the older C-5 aircraft, Congress of the United States implemented legislation that sets limits on retirement plans for C-5 Alphas in 2003. As of November 2013, 45 C-5 Alphas have actually been retired, 11 of which have actually been scrapped. Parts of one are now a cargo load trainer at Lackland Air Force Base, Texas, and one was sent to Warner Robins Air Logistics Center for teardown inspection to evaluate the overall structural integrity and estimate the remaining life of the fleet. The United States Air Force began to receive the refitted C-5M aircraft in 2008. Full production of C-5Ms began in the summer of 2009 when congressional bans on retirement of the C-5s was overturned. The Air Force actually seek to retire one C-5 Alpha of the each 10 new C-17s that were ordered. In October 2011, the 455th Airlift Wing based at White Patterson Air Force Base replaced all remaining C-5s with C-17s. The C-5M reached initial operating capability in 2014 with 16 aircraft delivered. Some interesting facts about this aircraft. The paint alone on this aircraft weighs 2,600 pounds and more than 100 miles of wiring and over 5 miles of control cables are required just to operate it, let alone load the logistics supplies on board. Each C5 engine gulps approximately 42 tons of air per minute and the total engine power of a C5 equals that produced by 800 average cars. The C5 can carry 25,844,746 ping pong balls and 328,301,674 aspirin tablets and 3,000... I can't, I can't keep going, I'm sorry. Also, its fuel capacity is equal to the volume of an average five-room house. Lockheed also planned a civilian version of the C5 Galaxy, the L500. The all passenger version would have been able to carry up to 1,000 travelers. While the all cargo version was predicted to be able to carry a typical C5 volume for as little as 2 cents per ton mile, although some interest was expressed by carriers, no orders were actually placed due to the operational costs caused by low fuel efficiency and a significant concern for profit making of a carrier of this kind. Lockheed also proposed a twin body C5 as a shuttle carrier aircraft, but the design was turned down in favor of the Boeing 747. The Shuttle Carrier Aircraft, or SCA, are extensively modified Boeing 747 airliners that NASA used to transport the Space Shuttle orbiters. One is the 747-100 model, while the other is the short-range 747-100SR. They are used to ferry the Space Shuttles from the landing sites back to the Shuttle Landing Facility at Kennedy Space Center. Unfortunately though, the C-5 Galaxy did not quite hit the mark due to operational costs and the fact that the aircraft was being primarily used in many different operations during that time. So folks, that's it for today. I really appreciate you stopping by and learning about the C5 Galaxy. If you can ever get up front and personal and see one of these things, I would encourage you to see one. They are incredible. Uh, if you did enjoy today's video, please leave me a like. If you want to be notified of any upcoming videos, click the little bell by the subscribe button. And thank you to everyone who's been contributing towards my Patreon and PayPal accounts, which are in the description box below. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.